Paul Cook here, your local listing estate and probate expert. I'm addressing topics related to real estate as well as probate. So if you have questions, please feel free to text or call me and I'd be happy to tackle them in a future vlog blog. Uh, you can find these vlogs on my YouTube channel and uh, the blogs on my probate website. It's www.athensprobateexpert.com, all one word. So let's dive in. What happens to all your stuff when you die? Part 1A. Please, please have a will or other legal documents in place for everyone's sake. That's what we're looking at today. Now, we could have an incredible discussion about the physical and spiritual uh, aspects to this question. What happens to you when you die? But for the sake of this post, let's talk about your possessions. My possessions. What happens to all your stuff when you're gone? Who gets it? How does that happen? What's the process? What, what can you do to help make this a good thing? Make it a blessing for those who receive it, who are left behind and have to walk through all this. So when this topic is mentioned, you'll hear terms like probate, last will and testament, living wills, and estate planning. My ex experience is that most people are reluctant to speak about these because it deals with comfortable stuff like death but also because it's unknown. And it can be incredibly intimidating. Um, I mean, you're dealing with legal issues and even the government. So need I say more? Hey, it can be my temptation as well. Yet everyone has someone near to them who dies. And spoiler alert, everyone dies except Elijah. It's a reality of life. So, that being the case, then let me debunk just a, a few thoughts. One, that it's, it's going to curse you and make you die sooner if you write a will or if you talk about death or even put an end of life plan together. So if I'm the test case, we had our will drawn up in 1994 and I think that's a few years ago. Hey, I'm still here and so is my wife. And we love being married. Not that that has anything to do with this vlog. But death is painful. It's hard to lose a loved one. Uh, it's the mourning, the heartbreak, and we just experienced two deaths in 10 days of very, very close family members. Death is challenging. So I'm not making light of that. When you add to it, leaving behind a myriad of possessions like cars and furniture, uh, house, stocks, books, equipment, clothing, bank accounts, insurance policies, the list is long. Along with the inheritance process that ensues, and it's, it's just quite overwhelming, even in the best of circumstances. So, on a personal note, we've had relatives who've had everything ready uh, with all the legal documents in place, and it's minimized the stress on the heirs and the executor, which I was an executor on a couple, and it made a quicker process. But we've also experienced relatives who had nothing in place and everything had to go through probate, and some even without a will. So the, the, the legal term there is intestate. That was incredibly stressful, difficult, and it was a long drawn out process. So I don't want anyone to have to go through probate once, much less twice. So I put together a team, uh, also a website to handle everything to do with estate and probate as well as real estate. And I've dedicated resources to this end to help serve you in this process. The website again, www.athensprobateexpert.com I've even written a book on it. Truth is, with just a little time and expense and being purposeful, most people can avoid probate altogether for their errors. And Georgia has done a great deal to help you be able to do that. Now, the best way to 
uh, avoid probate in Georgia is by creating a revocable trust for the estate. You can place all assets in that trust and name uh, a beneficiary who will receive those assets after the person is deceased. Now, I'm not an attorney, all right, so take that with a grain of salt. Here's another option. Uh, name beneficiaries that are outside the will. For example, if you have a bank account, uh, you may have someone listed as payable on death, POD. Other accounts and assets may offer that option or a transfer on death, D, a TOD, which prevents the need to include them in probate. Why? Because they belong to someone else upon your death. TOD means that the account or assets ownership transfers to that new person upon the death of the original owner. Uh, these may include things like retirement accounts and even vehicles uh, that have a POD or, or a TOD listed. Now, I'm going to stop right here on this part A and continue on in part B with more encouragement and ways to avoid probate for your loved ones. In the meantime, if you have need of, a, of an attorney or an estate planner, I am happy to point you to some excellent ones, ones that I personally have used and others in my family and, and beyond have used. And if you want more information like this, I'm happy to schedule a time to talk with you. Uh, it's free. There's no obligation. I'm just happy to help. Or you can even go out there and get a free copy of my book on selling an inherited house. Uh, it addresses this and other probate issues. You can get an electronic or a hard copy. Go out to my website, www.athensprobateexpert.com, or call or text me at 706-714-8553. That's 706-714-8553. Until next week, God bless you.